Here, I have the Adafruit Feather RP2040, a brand new microcontroller board from Adafruit. It forms the latest addition in their line of Feather boards, which are all similar uh, functionality uh, boards, but with a variety of different microcontrollers. This board makes use of the RP2040 chip made by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It also has a lot of interesting features like a LiPo battery charger, an RGB NeoPixel, 8 megabytes of flash storage, and some other interesting features that we'll go through in this video. To get started, I'll first talk about the price of this board. So I bought this directly from Adafruit, and it cost $11.95, and shipping to the UK was about the same, about $12 to $13, um, sent via USPS, and it took about a week, uh, a week and a half to arrive. I was quite impressed actually how quickly it took. I do expect though in the future that Adafruit will ship these boards to local distributors or companies such as DigiKey where they stock a lot of other Adafruit products so the shipping costs will be dramatically reduced. In terms of the size of the Feather 2040, its dimensions are 50.8mm long, 22.8mm wide and 7mm deep. It's quite tall due to the Molex connectors that are on board that I'll talk about later. Overall, it weighs about 5 grams. And when compared to a Raspberry Pi Pico, you can see that they're very similar form factor, but the Feather 2040 is just a little bit wider. So in terms of the physical features that the Feather 2040 has on offer, um, first off, it has two buttons, the boot select and a reset button which is just so much better than the Pico. It also has USB-C. Again, I much prefer this to the micro USB um, connector that's on board the Raspberry Pi Pico. And there's also an RGB NeoPixel, a 200 milliamp hour LiPo battery charger that can charge either a 3.7 or 4.2 volt battery um, and also power the board from such a, a, a LiPo. At the end of the board, there's a Stemmer QT connector for connecting compatible I2C devices from Adafruit, Grove, and Quick. Uh, I think also Seed Studio do some, but don't quote me on that. Um, in reality, it's just a four pin JST connector. So you can always just crimp your own connectors to devices that you, know, you want to use with this connector. There's also eight megabytes of flash storage on board and the option to solder on your own SWD or serial wire debug connector. And you can buy this connector from Adafruit and you can solder it on uh, if you want. I'm a bit annoyed that they don't come with them in the bag because you know I, I will probably make use of this. Um, however, it did ship with the header pins for the GPIO pins. This board also has eight megabytes of onboard flash and is powered by the Raspberry Pi Foundation's RP2040 chip, which I will briefly cover the features of. It has a dual core ARM M0 Plus chip that can run up to 133 megahertz, has 264 kilobytes of SRAM, it has four analog input pins, and support for peripherals such as UART, SPI, I2C, uh, it has 16 PWM channels, and a USB 1.1 controller with host and device support. It also has eight PIO state machines. On board the Feather RP2040, there are two LEDs, not including the uh, RGB NeoPixel. So one indicates the charging status of the LiPo battery, and another can be used for general purpose blinking uh, and so on. I think this leads quite nicely into the GPIO pins available on the Adafruit Feather RP2040. So there are 21 GPIO pins, four of which are ADC compatible, and that's actually one more than the Pico. Two I2C, two SPI, and two UART peripherals can be connected to the GPIO. And there are eight GPIO general purpose pins that are digital only, and they are also the PIO state machine uh, compatible. These GPIO pins obviously don't include the extra I2C connector that you can uh, plug into the, the Stemmer QT connector. The GPIO pins, all of them run at 3.3 volts, 
and none of the GPIO pins have the castellated edges that can be found on the Pico or other boards such as the uh, the Pi Moroni uh, Tiny 2040. There's a link in the cards if you want to see an overview of that microcontroller. And I personally don't have much use for the castellated edges, so I'm not going to miss them on this board. So, in terms of powering the board, you have two main options to power the Adafruit Feather RP2040. You can power it via USB or via the LiPo battery. Now, there is no uh, support, really. I mean, there are workarounds for this, but there's no support inherently for external power supplies. So there's no V-in pin uh, or similar. And uh, according to Adafruit, this was to keep costs down. But it's, it would have been nice to see. So your first option is to simply plug in the USB-C connector to a, a capable power supply or computer. And this will power everything normally. And then you also have the option to plug in a, a LiPo battery, which uses a 2-pin JST connector with a 2 millimeter pitch between the pins. Um, the polarity is indicated on the board itself and Adafruit do warn to be very careful of, to get this polarity right, otherwise the, well, you'll break the board. You plug both the USB-C and the LiPo battery into the Feather RP2040, the LiPo battery will actually start charging at up to 200 milliamp hours uh, from the USB power supply. When you pull out the USB-C, the LiPo battery will actually take over, so to speak, and apparently, according to Adafruit, this is a hot swappable process. In terms of external power, so the you can use the onboard regulators to power external devices such as you know I squared C or SPI devices and so on. So on the board there is a BAT pin which is connected to the uh, directly to the LiPo battery, and so will be the same voltage as whichever battery you put in. You've got the USB pin, which will take the plus 5 volts USB input and provide it directly to that pin. You also have a 3.3 volts pin that is directly from the onboard regulator onboard the Feather RP2040. One thing I do want to highlight is how nicely the board is labelled. Each pin is very clear what it can do and it's also highlighted on the back of the board as well. So you get both the back and the front. Unlike on the Pico, where the silk screen was only on the back of the board, and if you put it in a breadboard, well, you're basically stuffed. Programming this board is as simple as programming the Raspberry Pi Pico with either C or C++ and MicroPython, and also Adafruit's fork of MicroPython called CircuitPython. This channel mostly focuses on C and C++ development, and so you can find the videos uh, on how to get started with programming the Raspberry Pi Pico on um, on my channel. I'll link them in the cards above. And this is the exact same process. You hold down the boot select button as you plug in the USB-C connector, and then you drag and drop your built UF2 file over to the storage device. It will close, reboot, and start running your code. You just have to be careful that the pin assignments may be different. So different functionality to each pin. Some pins will be missing. Uh, and so on. But this is quite easy to just look at the date, uh, look at the pinout diagram provided by Adafruit. So I think that brings us to the conclusion of the main features and overview of the board. I'm personally really impressed by the Adafruit Feather RP2040 and honestly think that this is what the Pico should have been. I realize it's nearly three times the price, but it is very well built, very well thought out, has plenty of extra features and will go well in many of your projects. So do let me know if you found this video interesting. I'll certainly be doing more videos about actually how to program the Adafruit Feather. This video is sort of just a first look. And so please, if you found this video interesting, do like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much and have a nice day.